Kenny, you are our next speaker. Kenny Lee, VP Revenue Marketing at Seismic. Um, cannot wait for the topic of this one for obvious reasons. Your lead scoring model is wrong. That's your hot take. Take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much, Armando, for having me on board. Uh, really, really excited to be here. Uh, thought I would start off by you know, making this uh, provocative statement. Your lead scoring model is wrong. Maybe not so much wrong, but how it could be better. And I'm going to just uh, share a little quick uh, tidbit about myself. Uh, the VP of Revenue Marketing at Seismic, we're the leader in enablement. Uh, just quick interesting fact about me is that uh, I love adventure travel, been to the top of Mount Whitney, uh, which is the highest point in uh, continental US. Uh, also top of Mount Fuji, Kilimanjaro, Machu Picchu, and Everest Base Camp. The funny thing, Armando, is that I am scared of heights. So not sure why I'm putting myself through this. <laughs> but um, I want to share just my quick story. So every company that I've worked at for the past 15 years, you know, they have a go-to-market model that I think everyone is familiar with, which is you have marketing creating demand or they drive leads or qualified accounts. They pass those leads or accounts off to an inside sales team, be it a SDR or BDR team. They further qualify it and hopefully turn them into a meeting or a demo that uh, goes to their sales rep. And then everyone holds their breath waiting for the sales rep to either accept or reject that opportunity and then turn it into pipeline. And then there's a whole, you know, accreditation or, you know, you owe this much in pipeline by this team, that team and that team. And that's where the attribution happens. One thing I noticed time and time again in a lot of the companies that I've been at is that each marketing team or inside sales team or sales teams they'll work in their own silo. They'll create their own methodology for what success looks like. So for example, you know, many of us in marketing will create our own definition for what is an MQL or a marketing qualified account. We might use out of the box scoring or popular third party ABM software with intent signals to tell us that, right? Whatever it is, we'll define what we think a qualified handoff is to an XDR. The BDRs or SDRs will use the same methodology where they might have their own method, take whatever marketing provides, and then apply their uh, you know, qualification lens. Maybe it's Bant, maybe it's Sandler, it's some type of methodology. And this sounds crazy, but I've been in companies where sales will then look at that and then based on their own methodology, maybe they're using MedPick, maybe they're using Manter or a uh, custom you know, form of challenger or TAS training, they'll apply that. And often what happens over time is that each team, because all of us in tech are generally you know, capable people, we find a way to hit our defined metrics on a consistent basis, right? So what happens is marketing will say, well, I hit my goals or my handoff targets, or they'll try to hit their pipeline goals yet the conversion rates between different teams will be really low. It's hard to be predictable. And ultimately, sales will keep missing their bookings targets. There's a saying that often happens, which is if marketing is hitting their pipeline goals, but sales is missing their numbers, right? You can't give each other high fives on the marketing team because something isn't working. And this is something that happens on a regular basis that I've seen in different places that I've been. And then companies go back to keep tweaking their own siloed goals. So that's what happens. Um, my hot take and what I'll say is that ultimately, um, I kind of say that if marketers want to build the right lead qualification model, you have to know what winning pipeline that consistently converts the bookings in the quarter that was intended should look like. Meaning that look basically at what's happening on the sales side to see and get insights into helping you build your lead scoring model. So how do you do this? I think there's two ways. One is the easy way, which is you call Armando and you say, show me a demo of breadcrumbs.io, or you do what I did, which you know I didn't know about breadcrumbs at the time. And we did the hard thing by hiring a third party consultant to come and take every opportunity in Salesforce that we won for the past two years and lost and we brute force downloaded every, every uh, selection field. We then took those fields and we mapped those fields to key conditions like what were the convert, like high conversion rates, 
you know, high velocity, low conversion rates, you know, high conversions, looked at basically all these different attributes. And then we applied that to a scatter graph where we looked at where there were clusters of opportunities. Once we did that, we applied a decision tree analysis with the consultant. They identified patterns of recognition that said, hey, look, these are the type of fields or the type of selections that win more versus lose more. And we started to identify these different things that started to come out. So as we identified these opportunities, we then came up with a profile of key attributes of what winning pipeline that was consistently closing looked like. And then you could take that back to your marketing teams, your inside sales teams and sales and negotiate which of those different attributes make best sense for the different teams to qualify and disposition. And if you build that structure in place, or what I call you build minimum viable handoff stages, you can start to you know, better track where you might have challenges or opportunities in your funnel. By doing this, you also create what I call a system of like closed loop systems to be able to track clear, you know, recycle rejection reasons, why things move forward or they don't, all in the spirit of continuously improving why things are moving fast or why things are getting clogged up. So um, next point that I want to say is, um, you know, how did, how did this approach influence our overall strategy? Well, number one, it helped us really answer which accounts are buying, who are the buyers, you know, in this process, what do they buy, how much do they buy, you know, how and when, and so much more information. This was great information to help us further hone in, uh, you know, how we qualify so that we can actually improve our go-to-market efficiency and really understand basically how do we start increasing velocity through the customer journey. And, you know, I think it's obvious to say that you know, the customer journey isn't a linear process. You see where people come forward, they go backwards, how different buying teams operate. You know, this will help you understand basically where people are along that journey to figure out who should best qualify or who should best get ahead of, um, you know, um, asking the right questions at the right uh, different stages. So ultimately, it's all about getting stakeholders aligned on the same page. Um, and so... I'm going to say that to wrap up uh, my point. Um, ultimately, if you want to know what winning pipeline to bookings looks like, uh, analyze that and then get all your go-to-market teams aligned to those attributes and figure out how to divide those and conquer. Hey.